Hello my YouTube friends. Today I want to show you an awesome tool for creating an animated lower third just like these. Oh, and it's totally free and works natively in OBS Studio. So let's get to it. My analytics say that only 80% of the folks that watch my content are subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? If so, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. The first thing we have to do is download the tool. So let's get right to it. There are links in the description to this page so you can easily find it. And we just need to click download here and it's gonna download a zip file to our hard drive. And if we double click on that zip file, all we wanna do is right click and copy copy these files and we're going to place them pretty much wherever we want them. I have an OBS actual hard drive that I use and I'm just going to paste it into my OBS hard drive and then I'm going to double click on it and we're going to go in here and we're going to go into the lower thirds folder. And now I want to drop this down and I want to copy out this actual address. You want to copy out the location and then we're going to go into OBS and I'm going to go to view and docs and custom browser docs. And I'm going to give my doc a name. In this case, we're going to call it lower thirds. And then I'm going to paste this URL in here. Now we're not quite done with this URL just yet. So I want to put a backslash on there and I want to go back into the folder and I'm going to just copy out the exact name control panel. You can see these are HTML documents. So I'm just going to copy this exact text out of here, paste it here, and I'm going to add the .html after it because it's an HTML file and I'm going to click apply and there is our doc. Woo! Now we just need to drag it and move it to wherever we want it on our screen. And now we have our lower thirds installed. All we have to do now is figure out how to use it. So once we have it in here, we need to set it up. So it says here name, you just put your name or whatever you want the main text to be for your lower thirds. For info, it can be a subtext and I'm just gonna put YouTube tools, tips, and tricks. It's kind of my little catchphrase. And then once you have all that in, you just click one of these boxes over here to the left and it's saved into memory. So now if I turn it on, why is it red? Well, that's because you have to have the main one turned on as well, but it's still not playing. What's up with that? Well, that's because we haven't actually added it into our scene yet. So we're gonna click the plus and we're gonna go to browser and we'll just type in lower thirds here and then I'm gonna click okay. And now I'm gonna select local file and we're gonna browse to the location, animated lower thirds, lower thirds, and we're gonna select the browser source one here and click open. And then I'm gonna set it up so it's the same size as my canvas, 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to go ahead and check the shutdown source when not visible and the refresh browser. I'm gonna refresh the cache and delete the custom CSS and click okay. And now we are set and there we go. It automatically starts running and it's pretty generic. We still have the your logo here, but it looks pretty good. Now you can see up in the top left, it's running down. So it has the little number on the top of the two numbers counting down. And when it's set up initially, this runs 25 seconds. And then of course it just counts down the lower number, which is the inactive number. So if I wanna remove one, I just drag it out of there and you'll see it flashing red. And then I just click it again and it will remove that one. So now we've deleted it, let's go ahead and add another one. And this time I wanna add some logos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these logos logos and I'm just gonna copy them and I want to move them into our animated lower thirds logos folder and if we paste them in there now we're gonna be able to use these logos in our lower thirds so I'm gonna go ahead and just type in my name again and maybe we'll put it in spelled correctly that would be best and we'll put that little info in here once again and I'm gonna select the logo choose an image you have to go ahead and browse to that area animated lower thirds logos and I'm gonna select this logo here and click open and okay and there we go and now when you're done you just click the little box to add an inference of this lower third and it adds it Now, just so you know if you change anything you've got to delete it and re-add it which is why I showed you how to delete it before because once you click that little number button that's locked in that's the way it's gonna look so what else can we do with this? Well, we can go into the little plus here and we can change all kinds of settings. If you click here, you can add an outline 
to your box. Or we can click here and we can change the color of our box. And we'll just turn it off and turn it on so we can see what this looks like. And there we go, now we have that bright blue background. So in order to change the text colors, we can just go in here and modify them. And there we go. Change the secondary text color. And we'll just turn it off and on again so it brings it back up. And it's nice because when you're working on these, it will actually modify them on the fly. So you can actually physically see the changes happening while you're working on it. That makes it a lot easier to do these. So you just set them so they're active for a really long period of time. In this case, I think they're active for 25 seconds by default. So that gives you a pretty decent amount of time to mess around with the settings. And now I'm gonna adjust that background color again a little bit and we'll start it again. And there we go, that looks pretty good. I don't really like my logo with that color, but it is what it is. Let's see if maybe raising the size of our logo helps it out a little bit. Well, it makes the logo bigger, but it doesn't really help us. So we're gonna change the image on that. We're gonna use the black text and we're gonna click OK. And there we go. You can see when I selected the one again, it automatically switches it back to the white one. So I'm gonna drag that off and then uh, I'm gonna choose another one, click OK, and then I'm gonna click here again. And now it's updated. And you'll find that that's not as intuitive as you think. So you're gonna have to play around with it to update these. They're a little bit of a pain. And then of course this will put your outline in there. This right here is cool. I can round off the corners of my lower thirds. I can add an outline to my lower third. Let's turn this off and turn it on again. Right here, if I put my outline on my lower third, then I can adjust the width of the outline. Right now it's four. I can adjust it up or down to whatever I think looks cool. This right here is a shadow box. So if I want to add shadows to the text on my lower thirds, this is where we do it. And you can see it's pretty subtle, but you can change the size of this as well by adjusting the numbers up here. Pretty cool stuff. It definitely does help make it more visible. This right here will adjust the space between the two pieces of text. So you can spread them out or bring them closer together, however you want it. Now this right here changes the look of your lower third. And we'll get to that in a second. Right here, this will adjust the size of the actual lower thirds box. And this adjusts the margin for where it is located on the screen. You can also adjust the ratio between the sizes of your text. So what that means is, generally speaking, your top text is a little bit bigger than your bottom text. And this adjusts that ratio. You can bring them more in line so that they look basically the same size, or you can make the top text a lot bigger, however you want to do it. Now let's go ahead and change this right here. This will change the look of our lower third. And some of the features are disabled. In this particular one, in number two, I can't add an image. So I can adjust the rounded corners and all that sort of stuff, but in version Version number two, I can't add an image. Can also add outlines and things like that. So you just wanna be aware that in some of the versions, you cannot add everything. Now in version three, we're gonna add our logo back in there. And this one's pretty cool. This is a nice little kind of two piece lower third. I really like it. You can add the outlines. You can change the color of the outlines, of course. And you can add your little drop shadow here if you like. And currently there are only three versions that you can choose from, but they all have their own cool, unique look. Now these down here will adjust how the text is viewed. So you can set it up so it's bold. You can also set it up so it's all uppercase or it just keeps it the way that you typed it. Pretty standard text tools for that. You can also change the fonts. So there are bunches of different fonts in here kind of go through all of them. And the best part is if you don't find the font that you want, you can add a custom font. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a little bit. Now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose another image. We'll choose this Twitter image and then I'm gonna just change the subtext down here and we'll just put in my Twitter address and I wanna create this as a new one. So we're gonna select box two. And now if we play that one, cause we have box two selected and there we go. You can see that the back background is not really compatible with that logo. So we're gonna have to adjust our background color a little bit to make that logo stand out just a bit. So we'll make it a little darker. And there we go, that looks okay. So now we have two instances of lower thirds. 
and we can switch back and forth between those instances of lower thirds just by actually selecting them. Or we can use these tools over here on the right to adjust how long they're on the screen. Now this one right here, in and out will adjust how long it takes for it to draw onto the screen. And usually the default is the best way to go with that. Active is how long the lower third is active. So if I put five in here, it's gonna be active for five seconds. And then if I put five in here, it's gonna be uh, inactive for five seconds, which basically means that this is going to run for five seconds, and then it's going to be inactive for five seconds, and then it's gonna run again. So basically you can have it run the exact same lower third over and over again, every five seconds or 10 seconds, or however long you wanna set it. Now, if I click this little rotisserie button here, what it'll do is it'll scroll through all of the lower thirds I have. So it'll play the first one and then it'll wait five seconds and then it'll play the second one. And so obviously my durations that I have set here are really low, but this is something you can set up on your live stream. It will just do it without you ever having to think of it. And maybe every minute or so, you're going to have a different lower third that talks to your audience about something different. Now this auto trigger one um, triggers or switches automatically slots in memory. And I'm not exactly sure how that one works. I haven't figured that one out just yet. So if you know how that works, why don't you let me know in the comments? Because I'm actually kind of fascinated to figure that one out. And you can see if you switch these on the fly, they'll automatically switch while it's still on the screen. So you can actually use custom fonts. You can see there are a lot of fonts here, but what if we wanted to load our own font in? Well, if we go up here to the main settings and we go to custom, you can see custom font. And in order to add one, all you have to do is go into Google Chrome's and you're gonna go to fonts.google.com. And we can see a whole bunch of fonts here. If we just want fonts that have a bigger thickness, well, we just click the thickness and we bump this up and we can see we're gonna get a lot of fonts that are gonna be really good as custom fonts for something like a live stream lower third. And then all you have to do is scroll down and find one that you like. I like this Russo one, it seems pretty clean and clear. So I'm gonna click on it. Then you just go over here and you click select this style. And now I'm gonna copy out this font family right here by selecting all the text, right clicking and then copy. And I'm gonna just paint this in the first box for custom font. And then I'm gonna go back over into my Google screen. And I just wanna click the import button. And then I wanna copy out this text right here and just select it all and then right click and copy. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna control V to paste it right here or right click and click paste and then I click the plus and there we go Russo one that font is now loaded in here let's do one more so I'm gonna go back into Google fonts and I'm gonna go ahead and just remove all over here and then I'm gonna just click the back button so we go back into the fonts or I'm just gonna click browse fonts that makes more sense I'm gonna set up my font properties again and adjust that thickness and we'll just go through here and we'll find another font that's interesting this one actually works fast then I'm going to collect this and we're going to select import. I'm going to go ahead and copy this bottom piece right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just like before, paste it in the first box. I'm going to select the second box, go in here and make sure it's on import and copy out this text right here. And I'm just going to paste that into our second box right here. And I'm going to click the plus and add that font. So now we have two fonts added. And if I go down here to the lower thirds menu, you can see that Russo 1 and Fascinate are loaded down here. So let's see what they look like. We'll just turn on our lower third thing and there we go. Now we have these fonts in here. If I switch it, you'll see the other one. Boom. Very, very cool. It's so easy to load in these fonts. So you can add as many fonts as you want. And then you can also just click the trash can next to them to delete them. It's that easy. Now, if we go up here into the show more, you can see there are some options up here in the main settings. You can change the theme. You can enable a preview window, which comes up right down here at the bottom, and it will preview anything that you're watching. I'm not sure how useful that is. You can hide the number of memory slots. Um, so it just won't show the number in the slots. You can move the switches from the right-hand side to the left. And then you can show tool tips with the stored content. This is kind of interesting and usable. If I go down here and I hover over our ones and twos, it'll actually tell you what each one says. And that's pretty useful. And you see if I turn this tooltip off, 
and I go and hover, it doesn't give me any information. So that's kind of nice because if you forget what you put in each of these slots, you can turn that on, you can easily hover over and see it. And then of course custom is the font family and system you can import, export, and reset. So that's pretty much everything in the main settings. You can also add hotkeys to any of these so if you wanna just kick them off on your own, you can easily do it. And to do that, we're going to go up to tools and then we're gonna to go to scripts. And under scripts, we're gonna click the plus and then we're gonna go back into that same directory. So we're gonna to go to animated lower thirds and we're gonna go into the lower thirds directory. And here you're gonna see this LUA file. We're gonna select that and click open. And now our script is loaded in. We can just click close. And that will allow us to go into settings and then go go into hotkeys and we have all of our hotkeys loaded in here so that we can turn on and off our lower thirds. So you got your lower third switch, which is the little switch that you can turn these on and off from. And you have one for each of the four instances. And then of course your load slots, the one through nine, the little numbered load slots. Well, you can actually set hotkeys to each one of those load slots so that you can play these whenever you want or switch them even while they're on the screen. So I'm just gonna put in hotkeys for the two slots that I have created. And when I hit them, there we go. And I'm just gonna go up to the global times and I'll set the global time to five active and five inactive. And then what I'm gonna do is remove it out of the local. So we'll just use the global. And then I'm gonna just turn that off. So now our global time sets it to active for five seconds and inactive for five seconds. And now when I click my little thing, it runs it. And you can see when I use the hotkeys, it'll switch back and forth between each one of those. Now, if I turned off the inactive, so it didn't have an inactive time, that means that I could just prompt these to go whenever I want, or I can just up it and it'll automatically run. And then I can just use the hotkeys to select which one I want to run. That way it doesn't scroll through them. I can be selective. If I want one to run because I'm talking about something specific, I can select the hotkey for that one. And you can see it's gonna count to 30 seconds here. It's gonna run another one. And if I change it with the hotkey, that's the one that it's going to run. Now again, if I just removed the 30 seconds and made that a zero or with no number at all, it will just wait for me to press a hotkey before it plays any one of these. And you may choose to do that as well. For the time being, if I set it up so there's 30 seconds in between, it's just gonna cycle. And then I can use my hotkeys to select which one I want it to run. I like how the boxes turn blue and red to let you know kind of what cycle it's in as well. It makes it really easy to monitor this so that if you are using hotkeys to switch it, but it's on an automatic timer, you know that when it's red, you can switch it. And when it's not, well, that means it's active. And if you switch it, it's gonna be obvious that you switched it. What an awesome tool. Now for you Mac users, sorry, Mac doesn't support custom browser docs just yet. But if you're creative and you know a little bit about HTML, you could probably get it to work as a separate window. As with all free things, sometimes you gotta work with it a little to make it work for you. If this video helped you out, the best way that you can help others find this video is to give it a thumbs up so please do so. And if you want to learn about more plugins for OBS Studio, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.